endlessly searching for an original I gave you two you people time to guess. Break the game. No, that's gonna happen. I'm just really glad we fixed that Disney game. Holy crap, I am so glad that thing got fixed. I don't think we've ever actually had Detective on screen before. He's never had her chance to be on screen. Oh, I should make... I don't have a film noir version of her. Fuck. I do and I don't. It's a full picture, so I can't use it. I need, like, a black and white version of her. I'll probably make that later if somebody can remind me. There we go. There. There we go. So, hey guys, welcome to this live Simply Fun Games. We'll be looking at Private Dick, Lipstick and Lies. So this game, I believe, is going to have a Kickstarter very soon, if it's not already out. I don't remember. So let's try it. Man, we are just going into this, aren't we? Oh, that is really cool, actually. And this is, I believe, made in Renpai. So that's neat. Show a graphic close-up showing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, no, I like... This is something new I haven't seen before. I like that. Do we have music? Let's see. We don't have music yet. Okay. I actually tried to make one once. I tried to make a uh, a visual novel game. I got a few a few frames in. The rain falls down like tears. It always falls like tears. Or knives. Sometimes it's scythes or hammers or drums. But listen, I get it. You don't want to hear about the rain. You want to hear about her. Well, she's m her. M well, my name's Steele. Sam Steele. I'm a private detective. Oh, and it's all started on a rainy, rainy night. Hold on, I, I got, I got this. I, we're missing something. I got this. Give me two seconds, chat. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna put this in the noir. We gotta get in that noir mood. Give me a moment. I need to start naming my music properly. Where is it? Also, hi Bosco. I know you're listening. There we go. A date about damn time. I don't know what what it is about Chinese food that gets me so horny. I'd almost forgotten what it was like. Oh, okay. I was took me a minute to figure out which one was which. So maybe we should head back to my place. This intimacy, trading lies, skirting around secrets. It's just a short walk. The jab, the rip, the riposte, the jab, jab, and riposte of the flirt, the subtle jibbing, the teasing. We got awfully wet in this rain. It all, it had all been so easy, but we can just slip out of our clothes. I guess every dog has his day. Check. The rain left us cold, soaked to the skin. The darkness of her flat welcomed us, warmed us. Her skin was warm and goose pimples beneath my palms. It had been so long. I'd almost forgotten the salt of skin. We could be whoever we wanted in the darkness. Two perfect strangers and unleashing the animal inside them. Wait, let me see. Let me set the mood. Uh, you don't mind if we record this, do you? Oh God! It's a... And there it was, the catch. What? Come on, sugar. It'll be fun this way. You can't be serious. It gets me hot. I thought you were already hot. No one's watching, hon. You're crazy. Yet, you're sick. Look, I'll split the pro proceeds with you. Pro what the hell? Hey, calm down, sugar. 
I'm a fapper girl, you know. Just trying to make a living. A living? You mean I'm a John? Oh, come on. You thought I just wanted dinner in LA? Kinda. Jeez, I can't believe I wasted my evening on you. You wasted your evening? I should have had. I should have just. I should have just stayed in and fucked my own ass again. Now I'm down a night's pay. Because what, you shy? I'm not a piece of meat. Prude. Poor. You got a problem downstairs or something, sugar? I've had enough of this. You know, loads of guys have a micro penis. It actually brings in more hits. <laughs> Developers, I know you're going to watch this. Thank you. This just makes me laugh my ass off. I'm out. Again, this is going to be on Kickstarter, guys. Please support them. Damn right you're out. And don't bother to call. Asshole. Well, that told her. I love the music stopped at the perfect spot. Hold on. I need to make, like, a list. No, no, no. That, no, no. Just go back to blues, please. Well, that told her. Worst bar in town. There was only one place to go after that. Only one place I could really feel at home. McGinn's, the worst bar in town. If Cth I swear to God, if they draw Carl. A place where weak men crawl, crawled to try and find a little courage. Where strong men slumped trying to find a little vulner vulnerability. Vulnerability. Bleed some of it, some of the pain. Well, you have to remember, the game is still a work in progress, so these scenes are probably going to get changed. But if you if you don't like... So here's the thing. I If you guys want this, um, this creator's um, Twitter, I'll give it to you guys. And you guys can let them know on that or on the video when it comes out on YouTube. Because um, they are looking for feedback on this. And I do agree... But again, it is just kind of showing you the ropes, and it's more like a demo, so they're going to kind of throw you in with this. So just remember that. Women seldomly made an appearance, put off by the stale air and the lingering, hungry eyes that darted around like mosquitoes. But McGinn's had exactly one thing going for it. Bobby. So you just stormed out? Well, what did you expect? Seems rude. She played me. Six minutes work and you could have paid off your tab. Oh, forget it. Whatever, man. Sounds like you lost. So, where's Lumpy tonight? Dunno. He took a call and left. You mean he got a job? Probably just his wife. Or, who knows, maybe he's got a cam show. Christ. Uh, yeah, I regret even saying it. So, wanna get drunk and fool around? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that second part. Damn. But the first part sounds fun. Oh no, she's actually cuter than the first girl. Here, this one's on the house. You're shitting me. Cheers, Sam. Cheers, Bobby. We drank until Bobby kicked me out. I made my way back to the office, my head spin spinning to the bottle I kept in the drawer. And despite the sun rising, bloodshot in the sky, the day ended as it so often does, in the darkness and solitude. Terrible sec Secretary. Morning. Most people call it noon, but then most people don't work my hours. Jeez, you look rough. That bad, huh? <sighs> um, that was a compliment. I mean, usually you look like shit. Eve, my personal assistant. Good kid. Terrible secretary. <sighs> Any calls? Nope. Messages? Nope. Cases? Nuh-uh. Face party engagements? Nah. Career pi carrier pigeons? No, uh, what? Yeah, no. 
Right, I'll be in my office. Fuck you, lady. Carrier pigeons are adorable. How do you not like carrier pigeons? They're cute. And they're harmless. They're just little carrier pigeons. Whatever. Business was grim. It had been weeks since my last job. Nice little kidnapping number, old school. Missing daughter, disinterested cops, worried rich daddy. As with most of these cases, the kid napped herself. It all got sorted out. I got paid, I hired Eve, played the baller, bought around at McGinnis. Now Eve's watching a phone that she's never heard ring. I'm paying the kid to sit on a face party all day. Me? I got memoirs to write, smokes to light, whiskey to drink. This used to be a good job. Got me out of the house, let me meet people. But I've been replaced by a machine. An internet search will do in 20 seconds what it takes me to do for $200. Or so people think. Anyway, my afternoon looks pretty open. Not much to do but head to the bar. Maybe Lumpy would be there? I gotta fix my thing. Oh, hold on, Miko, did you hit the thing? Oh, you did, you silly little puppy dog. The only pe guy in the world with worse luck than me. All right, so now we really kind of get into it. Face party must be like Facebook, okay. Speak to Eve, chat. Boss, it's freezing in here. The kid wasn't wrong. I've had snowball fights in warmer places. When are you going to get that heating fixed? Just as soon as the big one comes in, kid. Jeez, I'm going to lose a toe. Wear thicker socks. I've got, healthy, I've got health insurance, though, right? I'll buy you some socks. Ah. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so let's go to the bar. Where's my music? I know it's the same song. I'm too lazy. Another night at McGinnis, at McGinn's, I walk through the door to see the regular clientele. Lumpy slouched at the bar, staring at his phone. But wait, sitting there at the bar, not the usual clientele at all. Roxy? Sammy. We all had a past, something dark we tried to bury. Roxy was mine. I was just talking to, um... Bobby, or sorry, uh, what voice should she get now? Bubby, Bobby, ain't she something? What do you want, Roxy? Aren't you going to buy me a drink? Nope. Excuse me, I've got to, I've got to change a battle. Something wrong, hun? Something wrong? I haven't seen you for how many years has it been? Wasn't it just yesterday we were on the beach? You've got some nerve, kid. You used to rather enjoy my nerves. Don't. How's business, Sammy? Oh, you know. That bad, huh? Yeah. Oh, but it's never that simple with you, is it? You're hiding something, Sammy. What is it? Just working on a private line. Private? What does that mean? It means I'm just fishing, Roxy. I see. Well, I know where I'm not wanted. You always did get very mysterious when you were on a case. Yeah, well, that's what you think. Thinking? Oh, but Sammy, that's how the devil gets in. You know I prefer to roll on instinct. That ship's already sailed, darling. I forgot how cute you were. What are you doing in town, Roxy? You about to pull a fast one on me? Me? Oh no, I'm just fishing. Now who's cute? Listen, hon, this has been great, but I got a date. What, here? Oh, Sammy, you're so funny. Have a good night, hun. Yeah. I didn't know what any of it meant back then. If I had, I could have done something. I could have stopped the plane crashing into the mountain. Let's see. Let's speak to Lumpy. We haven't actually seen him yet. I'm in a porno. The fuck? That's a quote. I gotta 
get more uh, more soundproofing in this room. I think I can hear my echo. Only one person frequented McGinn's more than me. Lumpy McGinnis. A dick like me, a private investigator, eyes and ears for hire. In a generous mood, I'd call Lumpy a friend, a harmless associate. A good man to drink with. Catch me before my morning coffee, and I'd tell you he's a hack, a fraud, a charlatan, forever sniffing out the next paycheck. When all was said and done, Lumpy was just a chump who'd been dealt a weak hand, forever trying to bluff himself even. Just like me. As usual. As usual, Lumpy was propped up against the bar. Unlike usual, however. Uh, hey, Sam. Look at this. I'm in a porno. What? He ain't even kidding. He ain't, sorry, he ain't even kidding. Lumpy thrust his phone under my nose. Bouncing up and down on the screen was a sight which no man or woman, for that matter, should ever see. Jesus, Lumpy, get that out of my face. What? I don't want to watch you railing some hooker. Hey, this was the best night of my life. Well, 11 minutes. And I got all of it on video. Anyway, she ain't a hooker. Actually, she paid me. Uh, so you're the hooker? No, hey, what's eating you, Sam? I just think there is a right way of doing things, that's all. Well, maybe me and my right hand will go off and do our thing for a bit. Wait, hang on. How come she's paying you? She's a fap star, Sam. She releases the vid. I get a tasty 20%. Wait a minute, let me see that. I grab Lumpy's phone and wound the video back. A familiar face smiled out of the screen, slow dancing in front of Lumpy's folk. Bree. I clicked the phone off. Bobby, pour us each a drink, will you? Lumpy, tell me everything. Wow. What can I say? Maybe start from at the start? Right. I'm on the can, right? Lumpy! Right. Christ, do you we need to know this? Well, I was looking at my phone, wasn't I? Actually, I took your your advice, Sam, and I was looking for a girl. Ah, oh, hell. I got some FAPA credits, so, you know, I was looking around. And they got this bit for local chicks now, right? Okay, okay, so you found a hookup online. Look, will you let me tell the story or what? Fine. So we meet up, me and this chick. And she's like hot, right? Like, I mean hot, va 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 voom type of hot. She says if I let her suck me off, she'll give me 50 bucks. So I say, what will you give me if I, if I fuck you in the ass? Right? And then she agrees, Sam. She says she'll record the whole thing and give me a cut of the sales. So we get back to her place. On Sycamore Street? Yeah, how'd you know about that? Never mind. Hey, you been screwing my girl, Sam? She's not... no lumpy. Well, anyway, she doesn't waste time. She pushes me down onto the bed, slips off my trousers like a frick- Yeah, okay, I'm not the only one. I'm looking at the chat. Also, I'm gonna be right back really quick. Sorry about this, guys. Is that just Miko moving? Sorry. I mean, I'm not gonna be right back. So, then what? Well, I don't know. She dries off and I went out for a burger. No, I meant, did you get paid? Did she blow you off? Sammy, I told you, she... I mean, did she cheat you, Lumpy? Nah, she tagged my account when she uploaded the video. Or something. She says the first royalties will come through any day now. So that's it? That's it, Sammy. Every word of the truth. All right, Lumpy, thanks. I gotta go take a shower or something. You don't want me to hook you up? Good night, Lumpy. Bobby. Night, Sam. It shouldn't have been any surprise. Bree was still out there, peddling videos for perverts online. It's not like I thought they were going away, like we're going away. But I didn't like it. Okay, I am going to be right back. Sorry, there's somebody making noise. Spaff. Something about the whole deal seemed off. 
There was too much money involved for one thing. There was no way a guy like Lumpy was going to cut a decent paycheck out of a deal like that. Was there? He's short, airy, and has the sweetest button nose. Gotta be a dog. Trial of Her Heracles. I knew something was up before I even entered the building. There wasn't much life on the, my block. Abandoned houses lined the sidewalk. Faca facades like sequentially numbered tombstones. The occasional bum cursed his way across the asphalt. And desperate low lives like me scraped a living out of a cheap rent. So it wasn't the sort of place where Sir place where Sir would want to park his limo. <sighs> Boss, there's there's a client in your office. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Points to the door. I knew this day would come. I stepped into my office to see her standing there, peering out of the blinds. Can I help you? Oh, good lord, you, would ra you rather startled me. I'm sorry, miss. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Uh, that is, my client. I see. It's a matter of the utmost importance, most delicate. I understand that is, or sorry, I understand that is, I hope you may be able to help. Well, now, let's see. Does Mr. Client have money? Yes, Mr. Steele, we most certainly do. And do you, or your team, find missing people? My team. Well, yes, my team and I are experts in the field. But we each have f families to feed, and this line of work is fraught with risk. Fraught. Of course, you'll be well, uh, compensated. Standing a little close, aren't we? What? Oh, yes, do excuse me. No problem. Mr. Steele, I need you to find a member of my client's family. Yes. Heracles. Heracles? Heracles. He's a Pomeranian. I knew it! It's a fucking yappy dog. Forgive me, miss. I've never been to the Middle East. A Pomeranian, Mr. Steele? A dog? Oh, I fear there's been some confusion. I know it seems irregular, but please, to my client, Heracles is the most important person on this earth. And he will be willing to pay $500 for his swift return. 500 you say? I am permitted to give you an advance. Well, Miss, uh, Emily. Emily? Just Emily. Sure, okay. Uh, can you describe Heracles? Well, he's short, hairy, has the sweet and button nose. I mean, he's a Pomeranian, Mr. Steele. I hardly think we require a sketch artist. Uh, a picture would work since, you know, dogs don't all look the same. Right, but he was last seen down by the docks. You know, those abandoned warehouses. What was Heracles doing in the... What are you doing? Gosh, is it me or is it warm in here? The heating has been broken for three months. It's freezing. I think my secretary has hyperthermia. I, uh, oh yes, of course. Silly old me. Well, I'd best be going. I'll be in touch, Mr. Steele. Uh, what was that all about? Just business, kid. Just business. Of course you've forgotten to pay in advance. Time to pay a visit to the docks. This is weird. I don't trust that woman with dogs. I'd go play the song, but it'd probably get us in trouble. What a shithole. The docks. The city's gaping maw. Through this grimy harbor flowed the chemical vices that kept the whole zoo running. Drugs. Added to our soft drinks and hard drinks delivered in friendly white powder and brightly colored pills. Whores. Shipped in cargo crates with the broken promise of a better life clinging around their ankles. Plastic clothes, cosmetics. Tons and tons of products made with cheap labor literally costing the earth. A discarded within and discarded within days. 
It was all pumped into the city's veins through this giant industrial complex. Vast barges trudged across the oil slick water. Cranes lurched out of the mist like ancient reptiles. Gulls circled, cawing and shrieking for a meal. What a shithole. And somewhere in this labyrinth of shipping containers and warehouses was a, the dog with the stupidest name in the world. Oh, that's just mean. Fuck. That is mean. Heracles is not stupid. It's freak. I mean, okay, maybe. Check the shipping containers. Lines of shipping containers were stacked across the docks. It would take forever to search them all. I strolled idly down the ranks, reading the scarred labels. Contour, Titan, Moretti, Kursk. The steel doors of the crate stood closed. If the dog was trapped inside of one of these, it surely wouldn't last long. I paused outside an unsealed container. The door cracked open. Rusty hinges screamed as I pulled them wider. The stench of piss and whiskey wafted out, making me gag. The drunk inside rolled over, mumbling to himself, his snores shaking the steel. I pushed the door closed once more. Galactica Warehouse the Galactica Warehouse was a monster square box, built in red brick, with tall windows lining each fence, face, while loading doors line the ground floor, allowing cargo to come and go. Skirt the I skirt the building looking for a way inside, but the doors were locked, the windows sealed. Whatever secrets were stashed inside would remain hidden for now. I hope the dog wasn't one of them. Let's check the warehouse. The, Mor the Moretti warehouse sulked in the shadow of a huge crane which loomed like a giant hangman's noose. The brick of the old building were blackened and worn. Crumbling white paint barely picked out the words Marietti Exports over the black wooden door. It was an anchorism. A thing out of time, unloved, worn, tired. I could relate. The way you're waiting for a cold storage warehouse. Not that game. That game's coming soon. The wooden door hung on its creaking hinges. I slipped inside to the darkness. It took a moment for my eyes to adjust to the gloom. Dust particles danced, a furious waltz in the air, twinkling in the moonlight, agitated by my presence. A plentitive bark rang out in the darkness, echoing from the from the gantry above. I climbed up a, br a wrought iron staircase, footsteps clanking with a cold echo, to a mezzanine corridor. Brick archways line the walkway, each crowning an ill-fitting wooden facade, a door, and a dusty window. Kind of reminded me of home. A whiff of perfume tickled gently on my nostrils. A woman? The scent led me to a doorway right at the end of the, m of the mezzanine? mezzanine? The mutt sat in the corner, spotlight by moonshine pouring through the grimy windows. Heracles bound across the room and pawed relentlessly at my leg. I can't remember the last time someone was so pleased to see me. Oh, it's cute. Poor wretch. In the far corner between large unmarked storage crates covered in tarp was a silver water bowl and a blue tray full of biscuits. A whole thing, the whole thing stunk. I dialed the office number. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello? Is that a way to, f to front a professional business? Uh, I think you're getting the wrong number, buddy. Eve, it's me. Oh, what's up, boss? Give Emily a call, would you? I found the mutt. Woo! Okay, what shall I tell her? Tell her to meet me in the office directly. Yeah, like I'd tell her to go to the office opposite. What? I mean immediately. Whatever, boss. I was left alone with the mutt. I drew a deep breath of perfume and dust, untied the dog, and made my exit. Uh-oh, she's there in the darkness. Bad things are about to happen. Dirty talk. 
She was waiting for me by the time I got back to the office. You found him. Hello, Heracles, old chap. He was right where you said, but look. Who's been a naughty boy then? Something's up here, miss. The dog was sitting next to a full, full bowl of food. Oh, mummy will be delighted, won't she, pop it? Miss Smith? We got, we got that get you, we gotta get you home to your be bedsy wedsy, haven't we? Why did you leave that dog at the docks? And we'll make you a special din-dins, yes we will. Was I being outsmarted by a dog? Wouldn't be the first time. Look, I don't appreciate the roundabout here. Oh dear, I think someone's getting cranky, aren't they? I just want to know what's going on. She finally looked up from the dog and held my gaze. Yeah, I'm sure you do. But answers aren't something I'm in the position to give. So perhaps, Miss Steele, you'll, Mr. Steele, you'll allow me to provide some alternative resolution? Did you steal the... He slipped to the edge of the desk and looked at me, eyes lit up with crazy. Dog. Tell me what I can do for you, Mr. Steele. Uh, well, all right. It'll be 500 for bringing the dog home. But surely there's something more I can do for you. She leaned back into the desk, knocking over a pile of paperwork. Hey, those were organized. Sort of. Fuck me, Mr. Steele. Listen, I've got... Fuck me like a rut and butt. There had to be a catch. There was always a catch. Oh, hell. But as Emily stretched her leaf body back across my desk, there was no price I wouldn't pay. And then, as if someone flicked a light switch. Yes, well, I think that's all sorted then. She slipped off the desk. All sorted? That was lovely, thank you very much. Can I get you a tissue or something? No, that's quite all right. Well, I must be going. Thanks again. Wait! Cheerio. Emily! Ba boy, Roxy was right. And there was the power word. Roxy? But your panties. Uh, ta-ra. And you forgot your dog. Whew. And my damn money. I watched out the window as she scuttled out of the building and into the black limousine which pulled silently away from the curb. The next morning, the broad called the office, said she would wire the cash. She also left an address, name of Van Beek. I managed to talk Evie into dropping the mud off. The cash would help me pay Evie's wages, earn me mo a few more beers at McGinn's, maybe even fix the heating. But something about all this left me feeling cold, and for reasons I can't explain, I didn't want to touch that money. It was almost enough to make me forget about Bree and Fapper and whatever dodgy shit they were putting up. Almost. And did that woman say something about Roxy? All right, so that's where we're going to leave it. So this one's interesting. I am curious about the story. It does kind of jump into things a lot. It could kind of build. If it's doing a noir type of thing, it needs to build a bit more. But that's just my opinion. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm going to end this stream. I hope you guys had a fantastic evening. I've got to go out and buy some stuff for dinner and feed the pets. So see you guys. Hopefully we made a few more patrons today. Good night.